How's it going everybody? Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for clicking on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today, things have reached such a precipice that I have to respond to the comment that I see on Facebook, um, on YouTube, all over the internet. You know, when, when there's an emergency, I'm just going to pull out my handy radio here and get the help I need or find out the information I need, etc. But I won't transmit until it's an emergency. Today I'm going to explain why that might be a failure of logic and hopefully help you out. So to kick this whole thing off, there's a thought experiment. There's actually two that we're gonna walk through. Let's say you're talking to your buddy. You know, he's, he's that guy who kinda um, jumps to whatever the most pressing thing is in the time of an emergency or an issue, and he's like, oh yeah, it's the new thing. You know, you should get this too. Uh, but but doesn't have a whole lot of uh, wherewithal to follow through. Just he needs to get that thing on the shelf, get it in, get it into his kit somewhere, his EDC, whatever. So that he's he he's got his bases covered. And he tells you, hey, I just went out and bought a Glock 19, and uh, yeah, you know it's one less thing I got to worry about now. Now I got that Glock, I'm all set. And uh, yeah, I put it in a safe. It's it's on the nightstand, all that stuff. Never takes it out, never shoots it, never gets any kind of training never consults with anyone about what he should and shouldn't be doing as far as personal defense, self-defense, in and around the home, you know, all that stuff, all the, the many different layers that I can add to somebody like that. Another friend of yours, maybe the same guy, says, hey, I just picked up this new tourniquet. Check this out, this is a cat tourniquet. And you're like, all right, right on, man, right on. That's a good thing to be prepared, you know, to have that capability on you. And uh, yeah, have you tried it? Have you, have, you, have you sat down, you know, open it up, do it around your leg or whatever, gone through, pull it up as high as you can, right? You know, the common stuff you would consider if you were using a windless type tourniquet. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. I just put it in my go bag and, you know, I'll have it when I need it. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. The I'll have it when I need it mindset. When it comes to a lot of things that you would use to personally extricate yourself out of an emergency situation, personally save your life or the life of another out of an emergency situation. We treat ham radio as though it's some kind of like magical device that if I just turn it on and I just start talking into it, then all of a sudden I'm gonna be saved. And I know that those of you with an amateur radio license knows that, that that's just not the case. And so really I'm making this video for everybody out there who's commented on my videos you don't need a license when it's an emergency. Well, you also don't need to practice when you get a gun. You also don't need to take first aid training, which you all should do. You don't ever need to learn how to use a compass to shoot an azimuth and take a direction. But I'm assuming many of you, maybe those who even say, I'll just use the radio when it's an emergency, have all trained, fired guns, gone to the range, learned first aid, knows how to use a compass. Well, why is that any different than this tool? Now allow me to add some clarification to this point. I am not talking just on behalf of amateur radio today. No. I am arguing for any kind of communication. FRS, GMRs, CB, and of course ham radio. I like ham radio. I view it as the Swiss Army knife of emergency preparedness, personal preparedness, and fun. You can do so many more things with ham radio than you can do with GMRS, FRS, and CB. But you should have something. You should have some kind of communication outside of your phone or traditional means of communication that's ran by other people and other corporations. You should have two-way radios in your lineup, and you need to know how to use them. Obviously, I would reference you to check out my channel. I cover a lot of videos on ham radios, how to set them up, how to program them. But you cannot fool yourself into thinking that purely because you own a radio, you will be able to turn it on and use it in exactly the way you think you need to get help. That is just not going to work. And let's keep it simple. Before we even get into any of the deeper ham radio stuff that I cover on the other videos in my channel, let's keep it real simple. A handy talkie for VHF and UHF, a dual band handy talkie. You are going to need to likely program frequencies into this radio. You can do so via the keypad on the front, or you can use a computer with a little cable that connects to it for programming it, but you're gonna to need to know what you should program on there. Where do you go for that information? Have you thought about that before? I have some videos on the topic, but I'll post a couple links in the description to videos and different websites you go to get frequencies. 
But once you programmed it, yeah, that's the other thing, right? They'll tell you. Some of those people will tell you. Well, I keep it charged and it's programmed and I leave it, yeah, I don't know, you know, maybe over here on the shelf. Well, that's like saying, I've got a gun, I keep it loaded, the magazines are always fully stocked, and I put it in the safe and, and that's it. That's all I do with it. Hey, it's programmed. It's programmed with gun food. But, you know, this is a radio, so frequencies. How is it any different? Of course it's not, right? You know that you need to go to the range. So why would you not take this out and use it to transmit and actually get on repeaters, actually talk to your friends, actually use simplex frequencies? Ooh, maybe because you're not licensed. Ah, I bet you've got a hunter's license. I bet you've taken a handgun safety course or required to do so by law from whatever state you're in, but you don't want to get a ham radio license. Hmm. Think about that. Square that with yourself with the logic behind that. Ham radio communications, the broader term of communications, two-way, reliable, person-to-person -person communication is just another leg of the triangle of self-defense, first aid, and comms. It should be a part of what you think about when you're preparing your home, preparing your car, preparing yourself with a backpack or whatever you're doing. So just think about that. Why would you want to get a license? Well, you need to get a license so people will talk to you when you transmit. They're going to figure out eventually if you're legally transmitting. And if you are just thinking about leaving this up on a shelf for the day that you need it, but you know that you probably should practice, maybe the time is now to get licensed. Maybe the time is now to consider it and do what you need to do to make that happen. Anyway, I'm not shaming anybody out here, I'm not trying to call you out, but I'd like you to consider just like what you think of firearms and first aid, think about the ham radio. It should be treated no different for your personal preparedness. All right, I'm Josh KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. I thank you so much if you clicked the thumbs up button. And if you subscribe, I live stream every Saturday, almost did it, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until I talk to you again, see ya.